Se nos dijo que no iba a haber ni preguntas ni respuestas, sin embargo, alguno de los compañeros reporteros le preguntó. Before El Chapo would make global news headlines for his multiple prison escapes, the first time in 2001 via laundry cart, and again in 2015 when he disappeared through a tunnel built under his prison shower. Before his story would become the inspiration for Hollywood productions, including the Netflix series El Chapo, and he would conduct an interview with none other than Sean Penn. Caí del castillo y el señor Sean Penn. Before El Chapo would be apprehended yet again in 2016 after one hell of a shootout with the Mexican police. They call him El Chapo, or Shorty, for his small five foot six frame but his legend is enormous. Some have described him as the single most vicious Mexican cartel leader in history. Now others, they describe him as a modern day Robin Hood. El Chapo was both loved and feared by the people of Mexico. From 2009 to 2011, Forbes ranked him as one of the most powerful people on the planet, right after Mexican business manager and self-made billionaire, Carlos Slim. Now Chapo, he was listed as the second most powerful person in Mexico. And go figure. The man, he has created a literal empire. Just take a look at the home he built for his mother in the Latuna neighborhood of his hometown. It was in the same town that Chapo grew up, witnessing the drug trade as it consumed friends and family members, including his old man. He stated, It's a reality that drugs destroy. Unfortunately, where I grew up, there was no other way, and there still isn't. El Chapo's life, along with various legends, have resulted in a certain mythology around his name. His empire is said to expand from the fields of Mexico into Los Angeles, New York, and Chicago. With a reach like that, it's no wonder that his net worth is estimated to be around $1 billion US. Now, in his home region of Sinaleo, well, he's even the subject of folk songs. Weirdly enough, when he was first arrested back in 1993, well, he simply told the police, hey, I'm just a farmer. What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Michael McCrudd, and we're switching things up today with an updated before they're famous. And this is on the man, the myth, the legend, good old El Chapo. Now, the first time we took a crack at this video was way back in 2016, but obviously this channel has come a very long way since then. As always, be sure to let us know who's next in the comments down below. All right, here we go. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! This country, you gotta make the money first. Then when you get the money, you get the power. Then when you get the power, then you get the woman. To say El Chapo is considered a king where he's from is an understatement. Now the man is worshipped and held at God status by many who still live there. This guy would make Heisenberg, well, fall to his knees in pity. But in order to understand the man, you first need to understand where exactly he came from. An area so plagued with poverty, it's been said that El Chapo's family home, it was actually made out of mud. Now whether that's true or not, it's certainly a place that could breed the toughest of the tough. Who is the man they call El Chapo? No, pa. Un hombre muy inteligente. A really smart man. Home to three million people, the Sinaloa state of northwestern Mexico is known for various legitimate sources of income. We're talking fishing, agriculture, commerce, livestock breeding, and more. But in the 1950s, Sinaloa, well, it was known as the country's more troubled areas. It's been the center of Mexican drug production for nearly 200 years. The poppies grown here were turned into morphine during World War II. According to the Mexican government, the region is still one of the poorest in all of Mexico. Now, due to his plight, many citizens of Sinaloans would take up employment in Mexico's thriving marijuana trade in order to provide for their families. Described by many as peasants, well, one of these folk was a man by the name of Emilio Guzman Bastilos of the Latuna district. No husband to Maria and father to over 10 children, Emilio! Well, he saw his three oldest die of illness when they were just young. Now, aside from the obvious grief, this put extra pressure on him to provide for Maria and the remaining seven kids. The eldest of whom was a young Joaquin Guzman. Joaquin watched his father Emilio try to survive work as a marijuana farmer while fronting as a cattle farmer in nearby fields. On top of that, Emilio, he was an alcoholic and he was also highly abusive in the Guzman home. Now Joaquin received the brunt of his father's violence and torment, and since he was the oldest, well, he was also forced to protect his other siblings. But because he wasn't very tall, well, young Joaquin, he would have a difficult time fighting off his dad. 
And for those of you who don't know, well, Chapo, it stands for shorty in Spanish. During this horrific period, Mother Maria was said to be the emotional support for the family, but she had her own responsibilities. She would grow beans and corn for extra money. Now, when it came to establishing his own future for young El Chapo, well, he didn't have a whole lot of options. When it came to education, well, sources state that he dropped out of school in the third grade. But another reporter in this clip I'm about to show you, well, they suggest it was actually a little earlier than that. Here's a kid who came from a very poor neighborhood in Mexico, first grade education, and he's known all over the world now. Now, with no school to hold him back, El Chapo was free to join the family business. He would begin growing marijuana himself in order to help support his hungry family and make his own way in life. In a recent interview with his mother, she recalls her son demonstrating a strong work ethic, as well as describing him to be highly ambitious. She stated, I remember he had a lot of paper money, little notes of 50s and 5s. He'd count them and recount them, then tie them up in little piles. He'd say, Mama, save them for me. It was just colored paper, but they looked real. He piled them carefully. Ever since he was little, he always had hopes. The bills he played with, they were apparently homemade. I mean, money was so tight, they couldn't even get Monopoly money. Nevertheless, this showed the man inside the success that he aspired for. Now his mother, 88 years old, she described Chapo as a kid who couldn't avoid Emilio's violent temper. It's reported that he would even flee to a grandmother's house nearby when it was too much to bear. Now 15 years old, a clash between he and Emilio finally resulted in young Chapo getting the boot from the house. He then went to go live with his grandfather and while his grandfather's location was unknown, we're pretty sure it was in Guato. Chapo now a strapping young man standing at five foot six. Well, he decided that he would step away from the poppy fields of his home region and go live with his uncle. Now he's estimated to be around 16 years old when he and his cousins began their own grow up in Mexico's Sierra Madre region. This is the heart of the Golden Triangle a region notorious for its marijuana and poppy production. Aspiring to work his way up the ranks of his country's drug world, he left Baderogato and found work with drug lord Hector Palma, also known as El Guero. No chapel would assist his boss with getting shipments of drugs over the border into the United States. For his first shipment being a success, well, Chapo would gradually ask for higher quantities of narcotics to ship as time went on. El Chapo became feared for his extreme methods of handling business. He was known for shooting dealers in the head if they failed with shipments or were simply dishonest. Now in his mid-twenties, El Chapo would begin working as a driver for now convicted drug lord, Felix Gallardo, head of the Guadalajara cartel. If you don't know who they are, the cartel is known for prompting what has been called the largest homicide investigation in American history. After after four years of investigations, the DEA had failed to solve the case. Due to several major shifts with the South and Central American organized crime in the 1980s, the DEA took special interest in Mexico. This eventually grew into several of their agents going undercover and infiltrating drug cartels throughout the country. One of these cartels was Guadalajara with the murder of Kiki Camarena. And this put extra heat on Gallardo's operation, and in 1987, well, he was finally arrested. This gave Chapo the opportunity to move on up. By this time, Chapo had accumulated enough wealth to buy several properties around Mexico, each of which he would use as a stash house for drugs, cash, and weapons. With his resources extending into the United States, he orchestrated an intricate smuggling operation that included underground tunnels and one hell of a lot of heroin. Above ground, his money would be brought back into Mexico through large suitcases. However, things with the Tijuana clan were heating up to a boiling point that wouldn't exactly end in conversation. After Gallardo's arrest, several crews attempted to move in on his territory. When Chapo sent his right-hand man to negotiate with the Tijuana clan, well, he was pretty much murdered before walking through the door. This resulted in a four-year war that involved shootouts, car bombs, and even a dead cardinal. When cartels put a hit on Chapo, well, several shooters closed in a car they thought he was hiding in. Opening fire, they ended up killing a cardinal who turned out to be in the vehicle instead of the drug lord himself. His murder gained widespread attention and drew heat from Carlos Guattari, Mexico's president at the time. A manhunt for El Chapo was issued throughout Mexico, causing him to flee to Guatemala. 
1993, Chapel was arrested and extradited back home and charged with trafficking and bribery. On November 22nd of that year, he was sentenced to 20 years and nine months in maximum security prison. His arrest and absence turned into an all-out power brawl. And then you had people fighting who were top officials in his cartel, and they both wanted to become the head guy. And so then there's a war between those guys and their gangs in the street. But as we all know, El Chapo, he's a hard man to keep behind bars. He bribed the officers, he got out in a laundry cart, but of course he would end up back in prison. Anyway, this is Before They Are Famous, so we're going to wrap this video up here. My name is Michael McCrud, and I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We do updates from time to time on videos that we did way back in the day that we think, you know, we can spruce up for you guys. More informative, better clips, and everything we can put together for you guys to the best of our ability. Let us know who's next, as always, in the comments down below. Check out some of these other videos I've suggested for you. If you're new, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!